Hi everybody, welcome back to Med School EU. My name is Andre and in today's educational video we will be covering one of the last topics of the biology section of the IMAT specifications and that is homeostasis. Now in today's video we are going to talk about the endocrine system and have a bit of an introduction to hormones. So let's first talk about what is hormonal communication and how does it actually work? Well, uh, we previously discussed our nervous system and the nervous system is fast but it is very energy expensive in terms of that it is able to communicate messages from one part of the body to another part of the body for example like the brain communicating messages to the muscles in order to move or communicating messages to the, the heart in order to pump with a certain speed. So all of those are communicated through the nervous system because we need fast response time, but movement of such messages is typically very, very energy expensive. And so the body cannot use solely the nervous system in order to convey its messages. There are other means of communication within the body to relay messages to other parts in order to do their function. And today we are going to introduce one of these other methods and that is through the endocrine system. Now in terms of the endocrine system, it is a means of communicating with parts of the body and eliciting responses through hormones so these hormones are going to be the communicating molecules that will communicate between one part of the body with another part of the body and we have seen this in the previous lectures we just haven't named those things as endo as part of the endocrine system but that is what we were studying so for example when we studied uh, about the glucose homeostasis and when we studied about adh and uh, and maintaining the water homeostasis within the body that is all part of the endocrine system because it does not go through the nervous system yes the nervous system is involved in terms of sending impulses to the endocrine system to release those hormones however the endocrine system will be the one that is activating the effectors meaning the the kidney uh, becoming more permeable to water and absorbing more water in terms of water balance from ADH which is a hormone and in terms of uh, glucose control that would be the glucagon and the insulin so we talked about these things in the previous lectures about the endocrine system however the endocrine system is slow in terms of response time compared to the nervous system but it is inexpensive in terms of energy expenditure now these hormones in the endocrine system will typically be released by glands. So what is a gland? Well, a gland is a group of cells that produces and secretes one or more substances. And these substances are most commonly referred to as hormones. So there will be releasing other substances depending on the bodily needs and what the gland really does. But in terms of the endocrine system, we will typically be talking about the release and the production of hormones from the glands. Now there's two types of glands within our body. There's the exocrine glands that have ducts and there's endocrine glands. So since it's the endocrine system, we'll be talking about endocrine glands. Now the endocrine glands secrete directly into the blood, meaning that they have no ducts. So the hormones that will be produced and secreted are going to be released directly into the blood and then the blood will obviously circulate and it will bind to the appropriate cells that it will activate and then the the cell will be the the effector or the group of cells will be the effectors as we've seen with glucagon and insulin and the adh so the all of those three hormones that we have discussed previously they are released into the blood and they're going to circulate around in our circulatory system and they will only attach and have an effect on the cells that have receptors for them. And so here is the endocrine system and you can see how many different organs and, and organ system it, it involves. So we've got the pineal gland that is located in the brain, pituitary and the hypothalamus, that's something that we have discussed already. Um, then we've got the thyroid and the parathyroid glands so these glands are going to be very important in releasing different types of hormones as well. The thymus 
the training center, the university for the immune cells. The thymus will also be releasing uh, a, a hormone. Pancreas, we've talked about pancreas releasing uh, insulin and glucagon. Adrenal glands releasing uh, uh, also plenty and plenty of hormones that we're going to discuss in the next slide. And the testes in, in terms of males will be releasing uh, hormones like testosterone. Whereas in the female, all the parts will be the same except for uh, females having the ovary as being the sexual organ that produces hormones and the placenta that will only occur during pregnancy. Now before we move on to uh, the types of hormones and all the different hormones that are involved within the human body, I just wanted to classify them into two separate types and what really are hormones. Simply put, hormones are cell signaling molecules. Well, technically hormones can be divided into many various types of, uh, of hormones depending on where they come from, what their structure looks like, are they peptide, are they fat? But I'm just gonna divide them into, into generally two types, ones that are water soluble and ones that are lipid soluble because they will have different effects on the cells and, and how they enter the cells or not enter the cells, what they do to the cell and how they are functioning as the signaling molecules will differ depending on whether they're water soluble or lipid soluble. So first, talking about water soluble hormones. And water soluble hormones are typically peptide hormones, meaning that they are protein, they're made up of protein. So like we saw with ADH was a peptide hormone, it is water soluble. And as well as the insulin and glucagon, they're all peptides, uh, generally speaking, and they will be water soluble. And so if they're water soluble, they will not be able to penetrate the cell membrane. They will not enter the cell membrane. They will remain on the outside of the cell and they will typically attach to receptors, just like the ADH, the glucagon, and the insulin. They all have receptors on different cells to attach to. And what they're going to do is cause a signaling cascade. Now, if we're talking about the second type, and that is going to be our lipid soluble, and these are typically going to be classified as steroid hormones. Now, these hormones are obviously, since they are lipid soluble, they will not be dissolving in the blood, and they will be traveling around, and they will typically enter inside the cell. So they will penetrate the membrane because membrane, remember, is a lipid. It's a, it's a phospholipid bilayer. And so if it is lipid soluble, then it will be able to pass the lipid uh, membrane since they are nonpolar together. But because the other ones are peptides and they're water soluble, they're polar, and they're not able to pass the membrane because the membrane is nonpolar. And so uh, these lipid soluble hormones, the steroids, are going to be passing along the membrane and they will be acting inside of the cell and typically they're either going to attach to a nucleus and and they will uh, have effects on certain genes and they will stimulate the cell to uh, produce certain proteins from those genes uh, marking them as as being the signaling molecules or uh, they're going to attach to it and be like markers to suggest to the cell that hey you need to produce these types of hormones or these types of uh, proteins. However, uh, there's obviously a lot more involved in it, uh, but this is just the gist of dividing the hormones into several types. Now, finally, I just wanted to um, show the chart here of the endocrine system and all of the hormones that are involved, the types of hormones, and the action they produce. Go over all of these hormones and I suggest you know the action of these hormones and how they typically work. I'm not gonna go through it in detail here. However, this is the chart for you to use in order to memorize these things. So this concludes the lecture for today. And in the next one, we are going to take a look at the homeostasis of the menstrual cycle.